Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at all those new changes to your new templates. All right, so this one here is the consolidated group reporting. If I go to the report list here, you'll notice that we've got these different reports where it says the word consolidated instead of um, company. Uh, over here, you'll notice that it has the words group as opposed to company. So if you look around all the different policies, you'll see the word group. Um, one of the main new changes under the standards is that parent entity disclosures are required. So the only way to really do this is with a custom report here where you would enter the parent entity balance sheet and then just a summarized total of the profit and loss for the parent entity as well. And then over on the notes page, you'll notice we've got a new field for subsidiaries. So you now have to add the subsidiaries and the percentages that you hold within those subsidiaries. So you can see we've got the new field here. So you'd have to add it under report fields. And we would add the subsidiary information in here. You could add it in a table if you like. Whatever suits you. Okay, so something to probably keep in mind is that you need to do the consolidation of the accounts externally. Okay, we have a blog on our website. So if you go to the knowledge base on our website and type in consolidated, here's a article here. Does Zero do consolidated group financial reporting to meet ASB 10? And we wrote this document. Now in this document, we walk through the process and we walk through some case studies and some example reports from the ASX. Okay, so next we're going to look at the improvements we've made for the reporting to charities. Okay, so what we gave you in the past was one charity template that had the reference to an entity as opposed to a company or a association. Now, companies and associations are the overwhelming majority of structures used by charities. So we now give you ACNC Company and ACNC Association. Okay, now we're going to take a look at all the general improvements across all entity types. One of the main things we've done is add a lot more report fields. We've added them because of all the experience we've had with auditors asking for that little bit more information. Okay, so if we go to report fields, you can see we've got report fields for items such as assets held for sale, cash flow information, changes in accounting policy, contingent liabilities, corporate governance report if you want to prepare a narrative, a PDF report such as a strategic, strategic report or a secretary's report or a treasurer's report, you would come in here and you would type the text actually maybe type it in Microsoft Word or something like that and when you finish with it you paste it in here and then it, it ends up in the report in zero. Okay. Uh, critical accounting estimates, that's a new one. Economic dependence, that's for charities, that's a new one. Going concerns, a new one. Uh, lease information is a new one, a meeting, so if you have to do a schedule of meetings, a members guarantee, we'll look at that, that's at member numbers, that's related to companies limited by guarantee, we'll look at that soon. Not-for-profit Australian law, depending on whether we've done a small not-for-profit template for you. Um, yep, revaluations, revenue recognition policy, secretary's report is new, significant changes may be new. Strategic reporting is a new one. Subsidiaries of groups and treasurer's report. So there's a whole bunch of new ones and ultimately the value is that you have to do less work. There's less processing, there's less bits and pieces lying around the place so it's all contained within one place. Okay, cash flow reporting in zero. Okay, so sometimes in zero the cash flow report just does not work. Uh, there's many reasons for that. One of the main reasons is when people post manual journals, 
um, they're not really aware that if you if you don't untick this it's going to end up in the cash flow report in other words let's say you're going to prepare just the journal for depreciation you would definitely untick that before you post depreciation other items would be dividends income tax expense um, reconciliation journals adjustment journals things like that okay so you've got to be very mindful about this because this can create a few problems it, we, we find it creates most problems when you're using a gen, uh, sorry when you're using a ledger so a a zero organization where all you have is manual journals that's where the problems occur okay if this fails what we have given you now over here so if that manual journal process fails what you can do is we've now got a whole bunch of custom reports so if you come in here and type the word custom we have got statement of cash flows custom and in this situation you would complete the whole report manually Okay, so you would end up dragging it up the page here, filling out all the information, getting rid of the word custom, and you're done. The other one is statement of changes in equity. Depending on your auditor, they may ask for the statement of changes in equity to be, equity, equity to be in a certain format. So we now give you a custom version of statement of changes in equity. The reason this report is custom and manual is because in this report we have columns of categories. We can't build you a automated reporting solution because these columns are categories. If you look at all the other reports here, the columns are dates. That report is very unique, so zero does not allow me to insert columns of categories. You have to do it all manually. Okay, one of the other improvements we've made is we have split out these text boxes. For example, if you see significant changes in the state of affairs, you will see it again twice. You will see the first one is highlighted yellow and by the way when you actually publish publish this report the yellow disappears so what you would do in this situation is you would say to yourself well is there or isn't there in this situation there were no significant changes so what you do is you hide the one you don't need so there's always a yellow and red presentation and you need to choose which one suits this job. Example, were there any dividends? If there was, we would hide this one and go and add the dividend amounts under report fields. Okay. There are about eight of these yellow, red, hide processes across the temple. So back up to the top here, if you wanted to insert a strategic report or a treasurer's report or a secretary's report, you would do it this way. Strategic report, back to the top. And then in the strategic reporting field, This is where you're going to paste your strategic report. So over here on the notes page, we have improved this significantly. Some of the main ones is we have created extra groups for expenses. What we've also given you is the option to put key management personnel disclosures in a narrative or, depending on your auditor, in a table. So we've given you an employee one and employee two section here, whereas you would enter the amounts. 
And to change employee one and employee two, you go to edit layout. And in here, you would go to employee one. And change the names. And here you can see, and here you can see, you can type in the amounts of David Banner. The same process applies for auditor's remuneration. You can either complete that section using a narrative, or if you've got the accounts mapped properly, they would show up here. We've also got, depending on which version you've got, we've now got a tax reconciliation process here where you would go and find the net profit before tax from the profit and loss statement. You would enter in any ad backs. And then you would, and then you would collapse these so they present better by going to edit layout. Just collapse those. And, um, you can, and you can see here we've squeezed up the amounts and all we've got to do is type in the amount and that shows here. Okay. There's a few extra fields down here for lease liabilities. If the auditor would like some information about the leases, you can go and put it into the fields and it comes through as a narrative. We also have the same for reserves, evaluations, etc. And you will notice down here we also have that yellow, red, you need to make a choice process. So there's about three of them here. And then we've also got the ability to disclose related parties with either A, a narrative, or B, with a table. And down here, we have inserted this reconciliation of cash flows from operating activities with profit after income tax. Now this only needs to be provided if your auditor asks for it and demands it. It is not part of AASB 1060, so it is not mandatory. Okay, and the final improvement to everything is we are constantly improving our knowledge base. So our knowledge base is available. We're going to restrict access at some point, whereas all our subscribing clients will only have access to certain articles. In here, we've got lots of templates for deferred tax, lease liabilities, fixed asset tables, you name it, cash flow templates. We keep adding more and more here based on all the feedback we get from our clients. Eventually, a lot of this information is going to be restricted to our paying clients. Okay, so that is all the changes. I hope this, was, this has been helpful. Just get in touch, give me a call, um, shoot me an email, let me know what you want to do, and have an awesome day. Thank you.